Welcome to TM Recaps, there will be a spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. Today, we are going to talk about a mystery thriller movie called, Missing, which was released in 2023. The movie opens with a recording of a camcorder video from 2008. Little June Allen is playing with her father, James Allen, during their last family trip. Then June's mom, Grace, walks in, and then James' nose starts bleeding, though he says he is fine. The video gets trimmed off, before being saved for June. A brief montage shows that James apparently died from a meningioma, similar to brain tumors, with many people offering June and Grace their sympathies through calls, texts, and voicemails. They moved from Texas to Van Nuys. In the present day, June watches a non-fiction series called Unfiction, then gets distracted by texts from her friend Vina and her mom. It seems like she has a bit of a rocky relationship with her mom, Grace. She thinks her mother is nagging and always on her case. Grace has also been in a relationship with a man named Kevin Lynn, and they are all set to go on a trip to Columbia together. Kevin tries to talk to June, but she seems less interested. A pop-up of the security camera appears on the screen, and we see the two adults leave in a cab. When Grace sends June an I love you text, she just gives it a thumbs-up reaction. Kevin started updating about their trip. June makes plans with her best friend, Vina, to party throughout her time alone. Then Heather, her mom's friend, arrives at her location to check on her. Heather tells June about her recent win. After that, June started chilling out with her friends and throwing parties with the cash Grace deposited in her account for emergency purposes. Kevin sends pictures of himself and Grace, but June mostly spends her free time partying, with occasional checkups from Grace's lawyer friend Heather. On Father's Day, she starts reminiscing about her father by seeing their old family trip. That night she throws a party, at which she seems uninterested but everyone else is chill. Later that day, she wakes up with a hangover. And forgets to pick up Grace and Kevin from the airport. She then hires a person from TaskRabbit to do the housekeeping work. June goes to the airport and holds a sign that says, Welcome back, Mom, from prison, but she ends up waiting for hours, long after the other passengers on the same flight have arrived and picked up their luggage. When Grace doesn't respond to June's calls, she then calls the hotel where they stayed and uses a Google Translator to speak Spanish, learning that someone saw two Americans leave when Grace and Kevin were supposed to, but they left all their luggage at the hotel. When June asks if they can check the security footage, the manager tells her that she needs to be present to get it, he also tells her that the footage will be overwritten itself in 48 hours. June looks for a cheap worker on Go Ninja in Colombia, similar to TaskRabbit in LA, to help her access the hotel security footage. She then hires a man named, Javier Ramos, pleading her case to him to get him to help. Ramos is unable to access the security footage because it's already overridden. But he overhears that someone saw the couple leaving the hotel. From Kevin's credit card's last transaction, he went to a hardware store and gets some money. As Ramos goes to find a lead, Heather helps June get in touch with FBI agent, Elijah Park, for help finding her mom. June and Vina manage to get Kevin's passwords and access his emails with the help of Vina's mimicking skills. While they go through Kevin's mail, they find 27 blocked emails from multiple women, referring to him by different names like Darren, Kyle, or Luke. The girls learn from Park that Kevin was a con man who was recently released from prison in the past year, but any evidence they may have gathered illegally about him would be thrown out in court. June and Vina also find Kevin, his real name. He was also recently in contact with a woman with the username Bunny Cakes, but her real name was Rachel Page. June does some more investigating and hears from Rachel's co-workers that she hasn't been seen in two weeks. June investigates Kevin's other accounts further and discovers that his most recent destination before Columbia was an isolated property. June dials the number from the link and speaks with a man named Jimmy, who says Kevin came to him seeking salvation and redemption for past sins. 
Ramos calls June back and says he went to multiple hardware stores and found the one Kevin had visited, but all he bought was a lock. When June goes through Kevin's dating apps, he finds out how he and Grace met. They got along quite well, though Grace alludes to having had a secret in her past that she privately tells Kevin about. After more research, June learns that Kevin went to a lover's lock bridge. Park contacts June and shows her footage of what happens to Grace and Kevin just after their trip to the bridge, where Grace apparently accepted Kevin's marriage proposal. Some men in masks get out of a van and pull Grace and Kevin into their van. Park promises to investigate, but the news of Grace's disappearance becomes nationwide news. The town's citizens gather and search for Grace, as it is believed that she never left Los Angeles. This is further compounded by the revelation that the woman in the pictures that Kevin was sending was not Grace, but Rachel's, just obscured enough to make June think it was Grace. This leads to Rachel getting arrested when she showed up in America, but she is being released on bail to be a cooperating witness, and it now confirms that Grace's kidnapping was staged. Park tells the press that Grace is not a suspect, but nothing is being ruled out. June talks to Ramos about her worries over her mother, as news of her going by different names and having a court-sealed case file begins to paint her in a suspicious light. Ramos tells her that she and her mother are lucky to have each other. June says he and his son are lucky to have each other, but Ramos says that his son has cut him off after they had a fight, which was exacerbated by the death of Ramos's wife. June encourages Ramos to reach out to his son. June finds a link to an encrypted messaging app in Kevin's email, allowing her to speak to someone in Kevin's contacts under his guise. When June asks for the number, the one she receives belongs to Heather, leading June to suspect that Heather was involved in her mother's disappearance. June uses an Apple Watch that a classmate left at her house to film herself as she goes to Heather's office to get answers. She also tells Ramos to stay connected. June knocks on her office door and finds that it has already been opened. She discovers a file being erased on a computer, as well as threatening photos of herself on Heather's desk. Further searching, she finds signs of a struggle, including Heather's broken necklace. June enters a closet and makes the horrifying discovery that Heather's strangled body is in the corner. Just as news of Heather's murder hits the news, June learns from Park that Kevin was supposedly seen by the border. When June goes back on the encrypted text app and finds Kevin speaking to someone on the other end, then, Vina sends June a link to a real-time crime tracker app, showing that police have found Kevin in Colombia. They surrounded him on the roof of the hotel, but they opened fire and killed him, leaving Grace's case running cold. Now filled with despair, June begins to clear her voicemail since Grace has always asked that of her. She listens to some of the messages and hears how Grace called her Junebug, which inspires June to use that nickname in Grace's password to access her emails. She looks into a blocked account and finds an anonymous threatening message to her, saying, Found you, Grace. She also finds a link to security cameras that are all hidden in a familiar looking house, which happens to be her very same childhood home. June then gets a phone call from Jimmy, the guy from Kevin's church. Jimmy sounds frantic and ends up appearing in front of the ring doorbell camera to reveal that he is actually James, June's father, who is very much alive. A shocked June lets James in to explain himself. He tells her that Grace's real name is Sarah and that she has lied to June about his death, making up lies about him to get him imprisoned. Just as June begins to suspect that something is wrong, James forcefully grabs her and pulls her into the trunk of his car. A flashback shows the rest of the trimmed video. The bloody nose James got wasn't from a tumor, but from his drug use. The truth is, he was an abusive drug abuser, and Grace turned him in to the police to keep herself and June safe. Recorded calls feature James threatening Grace and demanding to see June. Grace had changed her name and moved away to prevent James from finding her, but he ended up being the limo driver who took Grace and switched her with Rachel, working with Kevin to make her disappear, but Kevin never knew his true intentions. Heather was also the one who helped Grace, getting a new identity away from James, and they became very close friends. In the next scene, 
James brings June to the old family house, tying her up in her old upstairs bedroom. Grace is being kept in a shed, trying to find her own way to escape. When James enters with a gun and throws her June sweater, cluing her into her presence. Grace fights James and briefly takes him out long enough for her to run and lock him in the shed. Grace runs up to June's room and reunites with her, freeing her and seeing how apologetic June is toward her. Unfortunately, James gets loose and starts to get closer. June contacts Ramos through WhatsApp on the Apple Watch, first apologizing to him for how she spoke to him and then asking for his help. He goes on June's Instagram to find a recent post she made, which shows the family's old address to give to the police, but June loses her connection with Ramos. James enters the room and threatens June and Grace, even shooting Grace in the side. When he attempts to tie June up again, Grace stabs James in the neck with a shredded glass piece. James locks them in the room again and tries to get help, but he slowly dies from his wound. June apologizes to a wounded Grace for how she treated her, then remembers how Grace always used Siri for everything. Remembering how her phone is in her room and her laptop screen is still linked to the security cameras, June uses Siri to access her phone and call 911. Hey Siri! Call 911. In the last scene, we see that their case is fictionalized in the Netflix crime drama, Unfiction, which also covered the last movie's case on David Kim and his daughter Margot, which June thinks is lame. It also turns out that June and Grace have kept in touch with Ramos, and he has successfully reunited with his son. June has a FaceTime call with Grace, ending with her finally telling her mom that she loves her. Thank you for watching. Finally, if you find the video interesting and entertaining, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment with your opinion. Which motivates me to make more interesting videos.